a funny moment with the manager of the site, Mark Brink Jr., about the purpose of these circles, these sort of circles of post holes that they find across Poverty Point, and about whether these had any astronomical significance if they were aligned to any points. Uh, Mark Brink does not think so. We don't know why, because they cut it out annoyingly. Uh, I would love to know why he didn't think that, but we won't know. You know, I'm also curious to hear what his reasoning is, and I'm not trying to be contrarian. I'm just really wondering what his reasoning is. So I actually called the Poverty Point site, and I'm waiting to hear back from them. And when I do hear back, I'll post a short and put a thing down below or whatnot. Several days later. Never gonna give me up. Never going to let me down. Never going to well. Hey, Dan, this is Mark calling you back from Poverty Point. Um, when you get a chance, you can um, give me a call back and we'll chat. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye. Hello, and welcome back to the Dunky. And the last time I talked about Stefan Milo, he expressed some frustrations because this clip was cut short as far as he was concerned in Ancient Apocalypse. Mainstream archaeologists are reluctant to recognize astronomy of any kind in Poverty Point's wood circles. Here, I don't think they make sense. Why should the people who lived here and created this place, why should they not have been interested in the sky? I'm not saying they weren't. No. I bet they were. Okay. But so what do you yeah. think the circles were used for? We don't know. We don't know yet if they were used for astronomy purposes or yeah. not. And I agreed with him. I was curious as to what Mark Brink had to say about this as well. So I gave Mark a call and it took about a week, but I finally heard back. And well, the man said that he was not comfortable with being recorded without having like stuff signed through the proper channels because he's acting in an official capacity. He did give me a lot of answers, uh, more than just the answer about those circles. And I'm not going to like argue about any of the stuff that he said or anything like that. This isn't a debunking type video. This is just clarification. We watch Ancient Apocalypse. You ask a question. Here's the answer. Let's go. Well, the reason I called him to begin with was to talk about those dirt circles with the post holes and why he doesn't feel those are observatories. So let's start there. He says that there's really no alignments that have been demonstrated that are compelling to him at all or to archaeologists and that there's really no observing point that they can locate to measure alignments from so they just kind of measure across all these post holes and at that point you can you know get draw pentagrams with it right so he didn't say that that's me paraphrasing and since those circles have no alignments that are compelling to archaeologists or to mark brink he's basically saying that he doesn't think that's a good hypothesis for now until we get some different evidence. And then he started talking about archaeoastronomy, so of course my ears perked up, and then he said something, well, it just warmed my heart, because I say it at least twice a week. He said, these guys don't seem to understand how archaeoastronomy is done, or the basic methodology behind it. And I was just like, oh, I mean, you should have a beer sometime, buddy. I, I didn't say that, but all of a sudden I wanted to start talking to him, but of course I kept my mouth shut because he didn't call me asking for information. I called him asking for info. So I let him talk and I just would pipe in every now and again for a little clarification or to let him know I was following. We talked about a paper by William Romaine and Norm Davis and that's the paper that Graham Hancock's basically pinning his beliefs to on the site with the archaeoastronomy. And he talks about a few different things and, and one of the things is those these guys don't know how to do archaeoastronomy. But he talks about the, um, the poor alignments that they measured out in a few different places. They didn't pay attention to one of the mounds being built 1800 years later, Mound D. The mounds B and E do indeed work with the solstices from the normal vantage point here as you see in the picture. But, but if you notice when he goes to do the equinoxes he's moved the vantage point just out into the grandstands, right? And there's really no rhyme or reason to that. So that's uh, according to Mark. And so this is one of the reasons that he disregards this paper and archaeologists do as well. He, he finds that there's a little bit of it that's done right and a lot of it that's done wrong. And he mentioned there were other archaeoastronomy papers that had been done about the site, but all of them were either inconclusive or not very compelling to archaeology and therefore not to him. And one of the things that Mark Brink mentioned right out the gate was that he and Graham Hancock spoke for almost two hours and that only a couple of minutes made it into the episode and that it was heavily edited and barely included anything of what he said, that he included all the criticisms that I just told you and expressed them clearly to Graham Hancock as to why he doesn't feel this way, but none of this showed up in the episode of Ancient Apocalypse, which he said was mildly frustrating. I don't remember his exact terminology there, but he, he wasn't happy with it, but he, he said it pretty cool. You know, he's not very political. The, the difference between talking to him and the difference between talking to the, the people at Serpent Mound was 
was night and day. The people at Serpent Mountain I spoke to like a publicity agent type of person, right? Their job is to do PR. And it was, it was obvious in their political type of speech. I mean, you could hear from the message, Mark's a very conversational person. God dang knowledgeable. He didn't have, like, I didn't leave a message that said, oh, I need a bunch of archaeoastronomy stuff. I did left a message that said, you know, I watched some Graham Hancock. I had some questions. I just wanted to blah. So when I call him back, he doesn't really know what questions I'm about to ask him, but he knew the answers right off the cuff. And he knew the names of the people who wrote the papers. A lot of times he could give you a quick synopsis of the paper and, and like even the title of them in some cases is pretty, pretty impressive. A night and day difference from a lot of people that he may or may not like archaeoastronomy, but he definitely has done his homework because it's part of his job at the site. So I, I was impressed very much by that. Um, you know, I'm in no position to say you deserve the job but I was very impressed as far as like he knows his shit so I can see why he's got the job he has so after he expressed frustration with not seeing his ideas in that episode of Ancient Apocalypse I asked him the semi-loaded question would it be safe to assume that you feel that Graham Hancock misrepresented you and he was actually quick to say no I wouldn't say that I feel that it was the producers or the editors and I don't know for sure, he says, but I think that it was them and not Graham Hancock himself, which that kind of surprised me because everybody else has seemed to be like, man, Graham Hancock really misrepresented me. But he had a few things to say that was kind of interesting. He said that Hancock during those two hours was a little combative at times, but for the most part, whatever it was, that they edited it to make it look that way. That he was very respectful, very spiritual, very enjoyable to talk to implied that the spiritual thing was what made him think that Hancock wasn't the one behind the misrepresentations. So Hancock seemed too spirity to do such a thing, it seemed in his mind. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm misinterpreting him there a little bit, but he definitely blamed the producers and editors, not Hancock. And he said, he, again, he said he doesn't know for sure, but th this was where he said, no, I think it was these guys. So that was kind of an interesting take. That was really all the questions that I had for him and told him, thank you so much and have a good day. And, um, you know, it's kind of impressive that if you reach out to these people, they do actually respond to you and you can get some information from them. And um, anyway, I have an email address from him so I, I can get a hold of him personally through his email. He said he'd prefer that to phone calls in the future for some reason. I don't know. I, I didn't see an email address for him personally. So I figured if I called, I would hear from him like I did with the people at Serpent Mound. And lo and behold, it worked. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Sorry this is a short one. I should uh, be done with the uh, next half of the response to Dr. Miano here in a few days. Uh, thank you very much. Have a good night and see you next time.